हेलो क्रिस्टल्स वेलकम बैक टू माय चैनल वी ऑल नो अबाउट रूमेटॉइड आर्थराइटिस वेरी वेल इट इज़ अ क्रॉनिक नॉन सुपरेटिव इन्फ्लामेटरी डिजीज ऑफ अ साइनोवियल जर्ट इन दिस कंडीशन वी कैन सी मेनी क्लिनिकल फीचर्स इन द पेशेंट्स लाइक मॉर्निंग स्टिफनेस स्वेलिंग पेन एंड स्टिफनेस इन अ मल्टीपल जॉइंट्स रिमेंबर दिस इज अ मेन क्लिनिकल फीचर विच डिफर्स रूमेटॉइड आर्थराइटिस फ्रॉम द ऑस्टियो आर्थराइटिस and in some conditions fever also so if you notice there are some deformities are also seen in the ra patients especially in their toes and in the fingers so in our today's lecture we will talk about on this same topic which is different deformities present in the ra patients so without wasting so much time let's get started so first of all ra mainly affects the joint of the hand and finger wrist knee elbow and the ankle the less affected joints are the hip joint temporomandibular joint atlantoaxial joints and the facet joint of the cervical spine etc so the deformities in the rheumatoid arthritis mainly seen in the hand foot elbow ankle and in the knee so first of the deformities of the hand so in the hand there are three types of deformities we can see commonly which is the butner deformity swan neck deformity and the ulnar drift of the hand so in the ulnar drift of the hand there is a ulnar deviation of the fingers and the hand occurs so who don't know about what is ulnar deviation first of all i will clear it and then we move further so in our forearm in the anatomical position there are two bones are present which are the radius and in the ulna radius uh, situated laterally and the ulna situated medially uh, for our convenience remember uh, the radius uh, situated in the line of the thumb and the ulna situated in the line of the little finger uh, remember the shortcut rto means the radius thumb and the o for a position which is the movement of, of the thumb so uh, we can see uh, we can see that in the ulnar drift of the hand there is a ulnar deviation of the fingers and the hand occurs the next deformity is the butner deformity so in the butner deformity there is a flexion of the pip joint means the proximal interphalangeal joint flexion and uh the distal interphalangeal joint uh, hyperextension occurs you can see in this picture there is the flexion of the proximal interphalangeal joint and the hyperextension of the dip joint occurs and the opposite of the butner deformity which is the swan neck deformity in this deformity there is a hyperextension of the pip joint occurs and the flexion of the distal interphalangeal joint occurs you can see in this picture very clearly there is a hyper extension of the pip joint and the flexion of the dip joint in this x ray you can easily see that uh, why it is called the swan neck deformity you only remember one deformity other will be remembered easily now other deformity is the hitchhiker's thumb means the z shaped deformity uh, in this deformity there is a flexion of the mcp joint of the thumb occurs and the hyper extension of the interphalangeal joint occurs in the thumb there is uh, no dip or pip joint only ip joint is present so uh, in the thumb there is a hyper extension of the ip joint occurs and the flexion of the mcp joint occurs you can see the difference between our regular thumb and the hitchhiker's thumb in the hitchhiker's thumb there is the hyper extension of the ip joint occurs and the flexion of the mcp joint in this uh, picture you can also see the hitchhiker's thumb deformity or z shape deformity why it is called z shape you can see the z i hope it made sense now move further uh, now on the deformities of the foot 
so the first deformity is the hallux valgus so the hallux means the great toe so we can see that uh, there is the valgus deformity of the great toe occurs so in this deformity there is a lateral deviation of the first metatarsophalangeal joint occurs mtp don't confuse about mcp and the mtp tarso uh, stands for our uh, joints of the foot and the carpals uh, stands for our uh, small joints of the hands so in this deformity there is a lateral deviation of the first metatarsal phalangeal joint occurs we uh, so there is a abduction of the first metatarsal while in the adduction of the phalanges occurs i will show you the picture so you can easily understand see you can see in this picture there is a valgus deformity of the uh, great toe occurs so there is a adduction of other phalanges occurs uh, in this x-ray you can also see now the second deformity which is the hammer toe so in the hammer toe uh, the toe bend at the middle joint and the curl downward instead of pointing forward mainly this deformity commonly seen in the second and the third toe you can see in this picture there is a deformity of the toes second and the third toes commonly seen sometimes this deformity can be seen due to the wearing a tight shoes or the high heels okay before we move further let's clear a concept about hammer toe claw toe and the mallet toe so what is the difference between them so in the hammer toe there is a flexion at the pip joint in the claw toe there is a flexion at the pip and the dip both joints and in the mallet toe there is a flexion at the dip joints i hope it clear now again there is a uh, in the hammer toe there is a flexion at the pip joint in the claw toe there is a flexion at the both pip and the dip joint and in the mallet toe there is a flexion deformity at the dip joint now deformity of the ankle so in the ankle there is a equinus deformity is commonly seen this deformity is thought to be uh, occurs due to the gastrocnemius contracture you can see in this picture there is a equinus deformity now deformities of the elbow in the elbow there is the flexion deformity occurs this deformity occurs commonly due to rheumatoid nodules uh, which are uh, present in the olecranon bursa and along the extensor surface of the ulna so due to presentation of the rheumatoid nodules in the extensor surface there is a loss of extension and which leads to flexion deformity of the elbow you can see in this picture there is a rheumatoid nodules so there is a loss of extension which leads to flexion deformity of the elbow now deformity of the knee in the knee in the early stages there is a flexion deformity of the knee uh, commonly seen and uh, when the rheumatoid arthritis progresses in the late stages there is a triple subluxation of the knee occurs so what is triple subluxation so the triple subluxation means there is a valgus deformity external rotation and the flexion deformity with the posterior subluxation of the tibia is commonly present which is uh, commonly called a triple subluxation triple means there is a three deformities are uh, together present in the knee now let's revise the all deformities in quick okay in the hand there is a butner deformity swan neck deformity and the ulnar drift of the hand is commonly present in the elbow there is a flexion deformity seen in the elbow in the knee the, uh, in the early stages there is a flexion deformity and in the late stages there is a triple subluxation is commonly seen in the ankle there is a equinus deformity and in the foot there is a hallux valgus and hammer toe deformity is commonly seen i hope you get it well 
if you like my video then please like share and subscribe my channel and don't forget to press the bell icon so when i upload new videos like this you can easily get notified stay healthy stay fit and please keep supporting thank you